Hey folks, welcome to Lilith Gardens. I'm your host, Kenneth. Today I've got a short video on my biochar setup. I've had several people ask me about it, and so I decided to do a short video on how my own personal setup and what it looks like. Since this is just a short video, I won't go into too much detail. If you're looking for more explanation of how this all works, I've put a link down below for a video from Living Web Farms, who do a nice job of explaining all the things in detail. There are several different ways to do this, but I found this setup of an inner barrel and an outer barrel to be the easiest for me. In my case, I'm using a 55 gallon steel drum inside of a 100 gallon steel drum. But I recommend if you can find a 30 gallon steel drum to use that as your inner barrel inside the 55 gallon one. Your batches will of course be smaller, but it's a lot easier to move around. The larger outer barrel has holes to draw air in and keep the fire going. I have these at both the bottom and the top of the barrel all the way around and evenly spaced to aid in keeping the fire inside burning in a uniform manner. The setup works fine, but I do wonder if larger holes at the bottom would improve my burns. When I first built this system, I didn't have as many holes at the bottom, and the burns were slower and not as hot. For my chimney, I used a few clay flues stacked on top of each other. If I had more, I'd use them. Here I cut a hole in the lid of the larger barrel and bent the metal upward to hold my chimneys in place. Here's a look at the inner barrel. You can see all I've done for this is to drill five holes in the bottom of the barrel. This is to let the gases escape from the bottom, which will then be used by the fire in the outer barrel as more fuel for the fire and ideally leading to a hotter burn with less unwanted gases being released into the atmosphere. When your burn is hot enough and clean, there won't be any visible smoke coming from the chimney stack. Here's a look at the smaller barrel as it sits inside the larger barrel. You can see there is room to put wood for your initial fire that will heat up and cook the material inside the smaller barrel. It's the material that's in the smaller barrel that you'll be turning into biochar. You'll need a lid, a ring, and a bolt to hold the ring tight to prevent air from getting inside the smaller barrel. Essentially, you'll be cooking the material inside the smaller barrel in the absence of oxygen. Here's a look at what we've got left over from my last burn. You can see the volume is pretty small, but when I packed it in, it was all the way to the top. Here we've got a mix of some mesquite branches, clean scrap wood from some furniture manufacturing, and some other woody brush from my yard. Here's the finished product. If you pick it up and drop it, it should sound like glass. That's how you know you've got a good product. It should also break apart in your hands pretty easily. To finish breaking this down, I'll just run over it with my truck to turn it into powder and then later add it to my compost to inoculate it with bacteria and minerals. It's recommended to not just add biochar directly to your garden beds, as it will absorb a lot of nutrients and lock it away so your plants can't access them. Often, just to make sure my biochar is fully inoculated and has plenty of minerals, I'll add rock dust to my compost and let the compost cook for 8 weeks or more. This is a look at some of my hot pepper plants less than 2 months after I transplanted them from containers and into a bed that I built in a previous video titled Container Garden Fail. This bed contains a significant amount of biochar and compost. The results speak for themselves as we've had over 20 peppers on each of these little tiny plants in a pretty short period of time. 